วันนี้จะพูดคุยทางสกายนะครับกับทาง professor Kevin h e v i s o n นะครับซึ่งท่านเป็น professor ทางด้านเป็น professor of politics and international study and เป็น director ของ Asia Research Research Center ของมหาวิทยาลัย Murdoch ที่ออสเตรเลียนะครับตอนนี้อยู่ใน Sky แล้ว Hi professor Kevin Hi how are you Good, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, the first thing that I want to to know about from your opinion, uh, what do you think about Janta government in Thailand? Want to hear or want to get some uh, opinion, some idea from the experts or from academic foreign foreigners from another country about the uh, charter drafting in in Thailand? What do you think this idea? Well, it's an interesting idea. I saw it mentioned in the media a couple of days ago for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, one wonders who these uh, academics they might invite could be, mm -hmm. but based on the way that the constitution, the draft constitution, has been developed so far, mm -hmm. my guess is that they would probably only want to hear certain voices, and they would be voices which are more or less in support. Mm -hmm. Of what the military mm -hmm. regime is trying to do, mm -hmm. but the problem is that the j u n t a government they want to hear the idea can not to um, you know to stop or to to interfere the process about uh, charter drafting or constitution uh, drafting. What do you think? Just only the the support idea, not to criticize. Yeah, I think you know they might uh, listen to some small criticisms, but it's going to be tinkering at the edges. Mm -hmm. I mean, the military government has said that it has a uh, a timetable that it pretty much wants to stick to, mm -hmm. and my guess is that what they hear yeah. will be mainly the voices that support them, mm -hmm. uh, that like some of the ideas that are in the constitution. I wouldn't mm. imagine that um, academics who have been highly critical of the military regime would be mm. invited to participate in these kinds of events. I don't expect to get an invitation myself. <laughs> yeah, but uh, do you think the foreigner uh, expert or academic expert um, about the the politic or the reform um, constitution they can? Understand better to what going on in Thailand. I think um, if if people just uh, academics look at constitutions and mm -hmm. they're uh, they're academics whose main job is to uh, talk about constitutions wherever they are, mm -hmm. they miss a lot because they wouldn't understand mm -hmm. the political context in which mm -hmm. this. Draft constitution has emerged, and mm. in many ways, uh, constitutions are reflective of kinds of struggles mm -hmm. on in a society previously. Yeah. And mm -hmm. constitutional lawyers, for example, don't tend to look at those uh, kinds of struggles. They just tend to look at the mechanisms which are in, incorporated mm -hmm. in the constitution. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a bit of uh, institute. Uh, sorry, not institutional. It becomes constitutional tinkering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and discussions of whether it looks beautiful or not, rather than how a society actually came to develop a particular constitution. Yeah, and if you are the one that had been invited from j u n t a government to, you know, talk about the the charter uh, drafting in Thailand, what do you have advice or what do your idea? To give to the Junta government. Uh, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, the constitution as it's being developed is being put together in a particular way. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea is to change the nature of Thailand's politics mm -hmm. and to exclude some political groups mm -hmm. uh, to the advantage of others. Mm -hmm. uh, developing a constitution that's put together in that way, which is not necessarily uh, 
broadly based or, or broadly accepted mm -hmm. in the society in which it's produced mm -hmm. is not going to result in a constitution that is going to have a long life mm -hmm. uh, unless the kind of repression that we've seen from the military over the last year or so is going to continue for some time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the constitutional drafters are saying if they're lucky, this constitution might last five or ten years. Mm -hmm. But my, my guess would be in the same way that the 2007 constitution was uh, considered in some ways divisive and was a source of political conflict itself, mm -hmm. this current draft constitution, once it becomes law, will mm -hmm. also become a source of conflict into the future. Mm. So, do, what do you think can be, how long can it be if this constitution draft had been used or to be a constitution, what can it be, uh, how long for, not, 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 not long, right, that you're thinking? Well, I mean, one of the longest periods that Thailand has had in its uh, post-Second World War history mm -hmm. uh, of a particular kind of rule was mm -hmm. that which began with Sarit in uh, 1958 yeah. and finished around about 1973 uh, with the student uprising. And throughout that period, there really wasn't a constitution mm -hmm. in place. Mm. So in some ways, uh, if the military is going to continue to play a dominant role in mm. Thailand's politics, then w the constitution, the document that they're drafting, doesn't matter all that much. Mm. Um, it is the basic law of the country and it would be used as mm. that in that way. But mm. as I said, in previous decades, Thailand got by using draft constitutions using special decrees, military announcements and so on without having to worry too much about a constitution. Mm -hmm. So the question of how long it would last uh, is, is not an easy one to answer because it depends on what the military is going to do after mm -hmm. this constitution is put in place mm -hmm. and as uh, the country moves forward to, uh, towards elections. Mm. Do you think when we, I mean Thai government to finish the process to um, be a uh, constitution. This constitution can be create uh, the real democracy in Thailand? Um, I wouldn't be confident that that will be the outcome. Mm -hmm. um, constitutions, as I said, tend to be reflective of the kinds of struggles that have gone on in the society right. and also reflective of um, who's won in those struggles. And clearly at the moment, the military is taking a leading role. Mm -hmm. So it's going to reflect uh, what the military prefers to be the outcome. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the current military regime really understands what notions of democracy mean. Uh, mm -hmm. They keep talking about democracy, but it's never very clear to me Mm -hmm. exactly what they mean. It's clear that they don't mean mm -hmm. electoral democracy. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the provisions of the draft constitution talks about functional constituencies mm -hmm. and the only place that I know that that operates is in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and it's fundamentally anti-democratic because mm -hmm. it allocates more power to uh, particular groups and quite small groups uh, mm. uh, rather than the average person, the average citizen. So there are going to be fundamental features of this constitution which are anti-democratic. Mm. Yeah. In the detail of the, the section of each section in the constitution's draft, do you, what do you think in some section like they allow the outsider, the person in, you know, not the directly from elect election uh, to be a Prime Minister? Yes, I think that's very troubling. Um, mm -hmm. It's a kind of a, uh, a throwback to the period when uh, General Brem mm -hmm. was Prime Minister in the 1980s, mm -hmm. where in a sense, uh, and this is where this constitution seems to be going, mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the sense is that you develop a political system where you can have an elect, where you can have elections, 
but the results of the elections aren't particularly important to the way that government is carried on. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the constitutional drafters are saying you would normally only have a, uh, a, an outsider mm -hmm. as Prime Minister mm -hmm. if there's some kind of crisis. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as we know from Thailand's politics and particularly from periods of military inter intervention in the past, mm -hmm. it's easy to manufacture a crisis. Mm -hmm. And when General Prem was Prime Minister, he stayed in for eight years, and desp despite the fact that there were elections, despite the fact that there was uh, there were no confidence votes, he treated Parliament with disdain. Mm -hmm. He rarely showed up at Parliament. He didn't take any votes of no confidence, but he stayed in power. And my mm -hmm. guess is that that's the kind of system that the current military leadership would prefer for Thailand into the future. Mm -hmm. So, the new. The new constitutions, if they came out, that is mean they can bring back Thailand into the like fifty years in the past, something like that. That many people, uh, you know, talking about this thing. Maybe not fifty years, but it's certainly going back to the Brem period, or may. Mm -hmm. And some people have talked about the Sarit period. Mm -hmm. um, my guess yeah. is it's going to look more like the Prem period. And you'll recall during that time in the 1980s, a lot of cabinet ministers also mm -hmm. uh, weren't elected, they were appointed. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, when decisions were being made about uh, important, um, for example, infrastructure development, important economic uh, uh, investments, yeah. these weren't mainly decided by politicians. They were sent off to the senior levels of the bureaucracy mm -hmm. and it was essentially bureaucrats that uh, provided the advice by which the cabinet of, main, of, a, of a lot of unelected people would make decisions. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's the kind of model that the military leadership has in mind at the moment. Mm -hmm. So when the constitution had been come out from the process, so what do you think it can be it can create the peace in country or they can create the um, reconciliation in the country or they're gonna happen another crisis in the future I think it's difficult to predict I mean we know a lot of people uh, are tired of the conflicts that have gone on over the past uh, few years mm -hmm. um, there will be some people who would be willing to move forward with this constitution and kind of see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be people who supported the military coming to power who are also going to be supportive of the constitution and then the elections that follow that. Mm -hmm. uh, Thailand is a divided society, uh, mm -hmm. as most societies are, and there will be some groups who will be supportive of what the military is doing Mm -hmm. uh, particularly the elite, and there will be others who will be uh, not necessarily supportive, but will go along with it to see what happens and to maintain the peace. Mm -hmm. However, I think the evidence is that Thailand, when it has military back, mm -hmm. is not ne not not usually a peaceful society for very long. Mm -hmm. People will put up with military regimes in Thailand for a number of years, but they tend to want to move towards, particularly when they see things like corruption emerging under yeah. a military regime, mm -hmm. they want to move back towards an elected regime. Mm -hmm. But each time that they do, uh, for various reasons, they tend to be pushed back, to, pushed back again by the military. Mm -hmm. So. I can't see that cycle being changed by this constitution. And I don't think the military regime at the moment sees the constitution as the answer to that. They might say that, mm -hmm. but what they see as the answer to the conflict is, is through repression and, st and uh, uh, particularly with uh, people they see as pro-Tuxin, pro-Redshirt, etc. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is to uh, prevent them from being able to uh, participate in politics which would result in them having a say in the way things go. Mm -hmm. So the military is trying to limit and to reduce and to prevent yeah. uh, those kinds of people participating. Mm -hmm.
the main idea or the main reason that the uh, the, the military come to you know uh, have a coup d'etat in in Thailand because they want to stop the corruption in the country. So, what do you think from the rules, a new rules in the constitution can stop the corruption in Thailand in the future? No, I don't think so. Um, mm -hmm. You know, corruption has been an issue in many countries. Uh, it's still an issue in Australia and the United States. Yeah. Um, it It's something that um, has to be controlled in particular mm -hmm. ways and constitutions and laws play a role in that. So does education, uh, so does enforcement and non-enforcement of particular mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that strikes me about the way that this regime and the people who were uh, attempting to overthrow the previous government, one of the mm -hmm. ways they talked about corruption mm. was to essentially argue that it's only civilian politicians who are corrupt and they're the ones that we have to control mm -hmm. uh, and to limit and to uh, corral in a sense. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the history, uh, modern history of Thailand, Corruption is very widespread within the military, especially within the police, within the bureaucracy, uh, within the business sector and so on. Uh, so um, the kind of one-sided approach to corruption, which we see at the moment, which is targeting civilian politicians, is not going to solve that much broader problem and issue in Thailand. And it is a real issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's another topic that I want to, to know from you about the article 44 mm -hmm. what do you think we have uh, <laughs> under you know uh, drop a uh, charter driving to have a new constitution but under as much fears uh, you know article 44 what what do you think yeah when when you have a draconian law like this and you know we should also add in that the laissez majesty law has been widely mm -hmm. used under the current military regime. Yeah. These kinds of laws are, are used for political purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, they create um, a fear amongst people. They, they're a, what, what might be called, they have a chilling effect and they mm -hmm. dampen participation, they dampen mm -hmm. criticism and they prevent people from speaking as they would really want to and providing mm -hmm. uh, criticism. And of mm -hmm. course that's why the military is using Article 44. Mm -hmm. um, they say that they moved to Article 44 because they were getting lots of criticism internationally about the use of martial law, but actually yeah. what Article 44 mm -hmm. makes no difference. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. And the comparisons which have been made, I think it was with Article uh, 17 that Sir Ritt mm -hmm. had, uh, mm -hmm. and used uh, quite vigorously in the 19, late 1950s. Mm -hmm. I think those comparisons are, mm -hmm. are quite valid. Mm -hmm. um, the military needs either martial law or something like this in order to be able to make the changes to politics that I mentioned before mm -hmm. that allows their people to win the upcoming elections. Mm -hmm. But the General Prayut said they want to use uh, his power, absolute power, to move the country, not to abuse the innocent people. If the people, they're going to be a good person, so don't be afraid of Article 44. Yes, uh, that, that line actually has <laughs> been used by most dictators around the world of, you know, what are you, if you're not doing anything wrong, why are you afraid of these laws? Whenever mm -hmm. draconian laws are brought in, that argument is brought up, particularly mm -hmm. by conservatives. Mm -hmm. But we've also seen from this military government, I mean, they have um, called in hundreds of people, called in as a kind of a euphemism. Uh, it's a threat to people. Uh, they've done that under martial law and they will do it under Article 44. Mm -hmm. And to give one person um, the right to use such a draconian law um, is, is, is degrading uh, politics. In, a, in, in ways that, again, Thailand hasn't seen for many years. I mean, Thailand has had martial law off and on, particularly in the, in the south and so on, and each time that martial law or one of these other draconian laws is in place, we see people 
are wrongly are wrongfully arrested. We see people killed, as we've seen recently. We see see forced disappearances and so on. These mm -hmm. laws are the laws of dictators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yes. Um, another thing is about Thailand right now. What do you think about the uh, foreign um, policy between Thai and uh, another country like EU country, American or another country? What do you think right now, especially that Junta government you know, turn on or you know, restore uh, the relation between Thai and China and Russia and that's because the EU or American had, had been banned in Thailand that is something you know some people say about that so what do you think about Thailand had a good relationship between Thai and China and among the EU country and American country yeah, you know, one of the interesting things is in the past, uh, when Thailand had military regimes, mm -hmm. um, particularly during the Cold War era, mm -hmm. um, the United States was quite comfortable with military dictatorships. Um, mm -hmm. European countries during the period of the Cold War were quite comfortable uh, with that kind of uh, government in place because of Western interests. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I think uh, the current military regime uh, again reflects its um, its kind of insularity. Uh, a lot of these uh, military leaders haven't um, gone through the processes of being trained in the United States or trained overseas in the same way as mm -hmm. uh, their predecessors, and they lack a bit of they lack an understanding of how foreign policy works in the rest of the world mm. and they've all they also uh, have an ideology which seems to be fixed in the period of the cold war in some ways when they somehow expected that their so-called friends in the united states and in europe would accept another military coup mm -hmm. but i th but things have changed quite a lot over mm -hmm. the last 10 or 15 years in those countries of the EU and in the United States and in the way that they look at uh, military regimes. Mm -hmm. Yes, in places like the Middle East, the US uh, uh, makes allowances for uh, military regimes that come to power through coups in places like uh, Egypt. Uh, but they've been less willing to... particularly um, a military coup coming so, you know, relatively quickly on the heels of the 2006 military coup. Mm -hmm. The EU and the United States doesn't ask for much from Thailand, but it's what they ask for, for a return to uh, elections and democratic rule, is something that the mili this military regime isn't willing to give, at least mm -hmm. not until they've changed the system. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the standoff is coming. Mm -hmm. Partly it's a lack of understanding of how the world and how Thailand has changed on the part of um, the military leadership, um, but it's also um, that Thailand has gone through periods of conflict and the pe and people in the EU and in the United States have changed their view in the last 10 years or so of what Thailand is about and what Thailand's military is up to. Mm. Another uh, issue that we had been criticised about uh, a new uh, American ambassador had been posted to Thailand and what do you think it means something that US government they have a better standing about junta government in Thailand or what do you think um, I think the, uh, the the long period of uh, failing to nominate um, mm -hmm. a new ambassador mm -hmm. was a kind of uh, slap on the wrist for the Thai military regime Mm -hmm. uh, trying to put pressure on them. It was a diplomatic snub. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've uh, appointed someone. Um, they're saying that uh, you know things will move ahead back to a normal, a more normal relationship. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to be quite some time before the nominated ambassador, if he's approved uh, by Congress, takes up uh, his position. Mm 
-hmm. So it's a long period of time uh, mm -hmm. not to have uh, a full ambassador in place. Mm -hmm. And I think that is an implied criticism of the regime mm -hmm. by the United States. Mm -hmm. And how long can it be when the name of the uh, American, um, a new American ambassador to Thailand had been go to the, the Senate in US? So how long can it be, you know, it come out from the yeah, it, it can take quite a quite a considerable time, mm -hmm. and uh, this usually the the it usually takes longer when the appointment is a political appointment. That is, mm -hmm. uh, the president has chosen someone who's uh, kind of out of the their own mm -hmm. political party, mm -hmm. and then the Congress is likely to take often yeah. takes particularly if it's held by the other party mm -hmm. will take a long time to make a decision. However, the person who's been appointed to the United, uh, from the United States this time, or who's been named, mm -hmm. is a career diplomat, yeah. and he does have a, uh, a good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, he's been successful in other places. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that it's probably not going to take too long, mm -hmm. and any delays are probably more to do with American politics than with Thai-US relations. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll remember that uh, before uh, Ambassador Kenny was appointed, uh, the previous ambassador, um, whose name is going to escape me, um, mm -hmm. Ambassador Eric John, mm. uh, he, he also came out of the uh, East Asia Division and was a senior uh, bureaucrat in the State Department as the uh, current uh, nomina nominee is. Mm -hmm. So I think it will probably move along reasonably quickly now. Mm. I think mm -hmm. the time that it's taken to choose mm. what name to put forward, that's been the criticism, the implied criticism of the military regime. Mm. And if we look at the history of the new American ambassador to Thailand, he's an a expert about the North Korea policy. And uh, some Thai people say, or the economic Thai people say that maybe it's U.S. government is thinking Thailand it's more, you know, dictators or it's like a communist country, something like North Korea. So that's why they send this person to come to deal with the dictators in Thailand. What do you think? <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Um, <laughs> I, yes, he does have North Korean background and yes, there have been comparisons made between um, mm -hmm. Thailand and North Korea, mm -hmm. even by ministers in the regime themselves who have talked about uh, uh, commonalities in the Thai education system and the North mm -hmm. Korean education system. Mm -hmm. but, but in fact, I don't think uh, that, that, that this is driving the thinking of uh, who's been appointed. Uh, Korea diplomats move up and they often do specialise uh, in in other countries. Um, mm -hmm. Ambassador John, I think, was a Korea specialist as well, mm -hmm. uh, or had spent most of his time working on Korea. But I think when you get to a certain position in the uh, State Department and an ambassadorship is due, uh, with you know, you 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 generally try to put your best people into uh, reasonably important ambassadorships, and the ambassador to Thailand is a relatively important position. So mm -hmm. I think it's kind of normal promotional uh, mm -hmm. rounds. I don't think, um, while, while it's, it's kind of fun to think about the connection between North Korea and Thailand, I don't think that's what's driving this. Mm. Just um, the last question. Um, let's talk about the General Prayut Chan Ocha, the Prime Minister in Thailand. What do you think about his personal personality or his characteristic? What do you think? Uh, he's an interesting, an interesting fellow. Um, yeah. His uh, his behaviour actually is mm. uh, erratic at times. Mm. But it's a kind of, I, I mean, I may be wrong. I I haven't been to Thailand now for a number of years. Uh, mm. I'm not. I was told I'm not particularly welcome anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm watching it from a distance. Mm. Um, but his, his behaviour has, has uh, a couple of sides to it. One, he, he shows himself as a tough guy, 
Mm. And if you think back to previous military leaders, the ones who have been seen as successful and uh, you know popular over a long term, popular in the sense that people look back to them and say, oh, they were good times. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back to Sarit, he was a tough guy as well. And he was often erratic in the things that he talked about. He would, you know, on the one hand, he would be talking about arsonists and on the next moment he'd be talking about opium and then he would be <laughs> running off chasing uh, girlfriends and so mm -hmm. on and, and drinking quite heavily. Um, so there, there is a pattern of this kind of military leader in Thailand. Mm -hmm. But again, we're looking back to the past and an erratic uh, authoritarian military leader is probably not what Thailand, well, certainly not what Thailand needs. Mm -hmm. And what also bothers me a little bit is, for example, in the speech he gave his, you know, his, his report on his government's successes um, rather than failures over the last uh, few months, mm -hmm. um, he made some comments where he sounded as though he's starting to think of himself as a kind of a superman who can order... Mm -hmm. Uh, this is this is not a good sign for mm -hmm. Thailand's politics. Um, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not I'm not sure how other people uh, in the regime look at him, and uh, you know you see his the people who work with him, uh, mm -hmm. his uh, underlings and so on, standing behind him in press conferences, mm -hmm. looking rather uncomfortable at times. And I guess he's a difficult man to work with as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, this is not a not not what you would hope um, mm. a leader who claims to be trying to return Thailand to democracy would be, he wouldn't behave in this way. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you think he want to stay in the power longer or more than two years? Well, of course, he always says he doesn't. Mm. Um, but again, if we look back at history, we've seen other military leaders say, well, I'm not going to stay around for very long. Mm. And then they try to cement something in place that mm -hmm. allows them to stay in power. Mm. People in power get a taste for power and it doesn't matter, you know, uh, if we look back at uh, Thaksin Shinawat, um, mm. when he became, you know, he had a, a landslide election, he became arrogant mm. to a certain extent when he was in power as well. And this happens to a lot of powerful people, especially when they don't have others around them who are saying, no, no, that's not right, who are offering mm. critical comment. Mm -hmm. um, so my guess is that Prayut really would like to step aside, mm -hmm. but only if the mm -hmm. conditions are in place which allow for a political regime that protects the interests of the monarchy and the military first mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. he would also add the nation into that, uh, are, is in place. Mm -hmm. The kind of regime that he wants to see if that can be put in place without him heading it up, he may well step aside. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised that if there is uh, uh, conflict over the constitution or if um, uh, political groups start to become more vocal, mm -hmm. that he, as he said he would, mm -hmm. will stay longer and will be more repressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for your time Thanks. and I very appreciate that. Thank you so much, Professor. Okay, so what do you cut? What do you cut? Cut, cut, Professor um, Kevin. Cut. Uh, Kevin San, who is a professor at Mahavishalai Mordok University in uh, Australia. And actually, uh, Professor Kevin is going to have a lot of interesting things to talk about. He is interested in Thailand. He has a lot of interesting things to งานที่ตีพิมพ์จะมากกว่า200เรื่องนะครับที่เกี่ยวกับ South East Asia แล้วก็เรื่องของประชาธิปไตยแล้วก็เรื่องของโลกาภิวัตน์โดยเฉพาะในประเทศไทยนะครับก็มีผลงานหลายอย่างแล้วก็เคยไปอยู่ที่เมืองไทยแล้วก็ทำงานร่วมกับอาจารย์ที่มหาวิทยาลัยมหิดลที่ประเทศไทยด้วยนะครับเรื่องราวหรือว่าข้อคิดเห็นของอาจารย์เควินเฮวิสันนี้ก็จะเป็นประโยชน์แล้วก็เชื่อว่าทางรัฐบาลไทยก็คงจะลองพิจารณาดูกับความเห็นของชาวต่างชาติหรือว่าเป็นนักวิชาการชาวต่างชาตินะครับและนี่คือทั้งหมดของเสียงไทยเพื่อเสรีภาพของคนไทยในวันนี้นะครับขอบพระคุณทุกท่านที่ติดตามรับชมกลับมาพบกันใหม่ในครั้งหน้าสำหรับวันนี้สวัสดีครับ